promises. Hey! I need y'all to come on and clap those hands all over this place if you're standing on his promises. Do you believe what he said? Do you believe his promises? Here we go, choir, say his promise. Good evening, everyone. Welcome, welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study. God bless you. Um, and our time of prayer, we pray that uh, the Lord has been gracious to you and it's good to see you all on tonight. Thank you all for carving this time out of your schedule on a weekly basis for the purpose of studying the word of the Lord. Um, and we are always so glad to be able to come together um, with all the things that's going on in the world, it's good to come together um, and study the word. So welcome uh, to each of you tonight. I pray that your prayers will be answered. I pray that your um, appetite for the word will be satisfied. I pray that there will uh, be a meal on the table for you tonight in the study of the word of the Lord. Uh, so thank you all for being here with us. And we are always praying for you. Uh, we're always praying with you as you endeavor to go through all the things that you're going through. So tonight we're going to be led in our um, scripture reading and prayer tonight by our chairman, Deacon Irby. Um, but before he comes, again, just a just a, um, just a few names. Uh, that we want to call out and um, want to make sure that we lift individuals up in prayer um, and even um, just remember those that are requesting prayer. We pray for them on Wednesday, but there's others that just desire prayer, period. So in your private time, um, remember these names, remember uh, some of these that are requesting prayer. But we want to pray for all of our sick. We want to pray for all of our shut-in, those that are um, going through some difficult times, um, physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally. Um, we also pray for those that are um, bereaved and still dealing with the loss of loved ones. Um, we pray that God will bless and provide a sense of peace to the hearts um, of those that are going through uh, the difficult times. Uh, so we pray tonight for um, all of our mothers, as we always do. We lift you up in prayer. Um, we ask that you, as a mother's board, continue to pray for us. For well, we do need your prayers. Um, we pray for Mother Carolyn Simmons, um, as we've been doing, still believing and trusting God for a miracle, um, that her strength shall return in her back. I'm praying for uh, Mother Arcola, battle continuing to lift her up as I talked with her on Sunday. We praise God for answering her prayers. Um, and we um, not only just request, but sometimes it's a prayer of thanksgiving. Um, I'm telling God, thank you for um, answering the prayers of his children. Um, pray for Reverend Cochran again. So good to see him answer to Cochran on Sunday. Um, pray that God will continue to strengthen him. And he had some very encouraging words for, for me and for us, um, and as well as for his vision, um, for his own health. I love people speak positively about their own situations that demonstrates the faith in the God that they serve. Um, so we pray for him. Uh, we also pray for Reverend Williams as well. Um, again, I know he's getting better. I think he may be on tonight, but we're praying for him continually um, as a brother who um, encourages and motivates others. So we want to continue to pray for him, his family. Pray for Deacon David Mack. Um, God will continue to strengthen him as well. Um, Brother Paul Mack, we continue to lift him in prayer as well. Uh, praying for Deacon Dante Cofield um, as well as Sister Cofield. We know their situation and we know God is able to strengthen and provide for them. 
Also praying for uh, Deacon Simeon Thomas, um, uh, praying for his mother. Um, she was hospitalized. Um, and um, so we praying for um, her full recovery. We're praying that God will strengthen her, that she will be able to go home soon. Um, so we just want him and his family to know that his church is praying for him as well as for uh, his mother. Uh, so we want to be prayerful for Sister Linda Lapp, continuing with her therapy um, and moving forward with uh, her therapy as well. Um, praying for Brother Moses Dallas and bless so that he's on tonight as we trust God for um, his continued healing and blessings. Um, we are also praying uh, for, and thankful for Sister Bernice Buford. Um, hearing her news that she gives me week after week is just so encouraging from God from the God we serve. Um, again, the reminder that God hears us um, and he is a merciful God. He may not answer when we think he ought to, but just keep following his trail. You'll realize he's been merciful the whole time. So we thank God for his continued mercies upon Sister Beaver, continuing to pray for Sister Doris Butler, who requests prayer as well. So we lift her um, up in prayer. Um, Brother Douglas Thrash, Praying for him. We know that he only get his shots once per month, I think, or uh, I think it's once a month that he goes through the process. Um, so we want to be uh, continuously prayerful for Doug, that God will keep strengthening him. Praying for all of our youth, all of our young adults, all of our college students, all of them that are graduating, um, all of them that are transitioning from, from the schoolhouse to the workhouse. Amen. Um, trying to establish a new normal of their lives. Um, so pray for our young folks and pray for Reverend Henderson that he continues to be motivated, encouraging for our children and for our youth. Um, and even tonight, if you do have some children, grandchildren, get them on Slack. He was doing class tonight. You know, they ain't sitting around. They sitting around doing nothing. Put them on there. You now we got a platform for them to uh, for them to have Bible study as well. Um, we also ask prayer for Sister Lakisa Stafford. We've been praying for her. Uh, continue to pray for her uh, recovery. Um, for um, God knows what she is going through. And um, our organist, Brother Willie Dangers, asks us to be in prayer for his sister, uh, Sister Bunny Talbert. Um, she's in the in rehab up in Detroit. Um, she took a fall and she's in rehab. And he asks if we would be in prayer for her. Um, and I told him that we would add her to our list um, of, of individuals requesting prayer. And I ask um, that you be prayerful for uh, my, one of my cousins in New Jersey. Um, her name is Lynn Johnson. Um, she um, lost her um, significant other. They weren't married, but um, very close and had a kid together. And um, But he passed away. So. Uh, she's dealing with a loss and just recently lost her mother. So, um, but we pray for her uh, that God will strengthen her through difficult times. And uh, my brothers and sisters, I say to you, um, we just never know um, what's next. We never know what is the next challenge of life. We don't know what um, address that trouble is going to show up at next. But I know for sure that your address is not immune from it, and neither is mine. So let us be proactive in our prayers, um, praying and interceding for one another, um, because we just never know when our name is going to be on the list that we're asking our church to be prayerful for us. So again, um, let us take this as serious as we take anything else, um, because the power of prayer um, is something that the Lord talks about um, and that he demonstrated to us. And don't feel bad if you're not the greatest prayer warrior in the world. Even Jesus' disciples are asking the Lord, teach us how to pray. Um, so if you want to have a stronger prayer life, just ask the Lord. He says, you have not because you ask not. Um, and God gives uh, liberally wisdom to understand in prayer. So, uh, again, I just want to encourage you that trouble don't last always, that if we just hold on to God's unchanging hand, all of these names, all of these people, we're trusting them to God. Um, every situation, we're trusting it to God. So I feel that prayer is just as important as studying. 
um, because our communication with God is letting our request be known to our Heavenly Father. So at this time, um, Deacon Irby, I'm going to turn it over to you, sir, for our scripture reading and for our time of prayer. I think it's still muted, Dean. There, there you go. Well, good evening, all. Hoping that everyone's enjoying this great day the Lord has made for us and given us the opportunity to, to continue to, to praise Him for who He is. Uh, our lesson text will be coming from uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and I'll be reading in your hearing verses 14 through 18. And 14 said, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sake. That the abundance grace might through the Thanksgiving of many rebound in the grace and the glory of God. For which cause we thank. No, because we, we thank not, but from the outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day for our for our light affliction which is but for a moment work is for us as for more exceedingly and eternal weight of glory while we look not at the thing which we see but of the thing which we see not. For the thing which we seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. That's our reading for tonight. Second Corinthians chapter 14, I'm sorry, chapter 4, 14, verse 14 through 18. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Our Father, the God of our salvation, the one who died upon the cross, enrolled the third day and sent it back to heaven, who is right now sitting on the right hand of the Father, and he's our advocator. So, Father God, there are many sick among us, we pray, Lord, that your healing hand will be upon each and every one of them. Pray, Lord, that you will bless those that are in leadership position. Pray, Lord, that you will humble them, that we will see you more than anything else. Father God, we pray, Lord, for those that are sick. We pray your healing hand be upon them. Lord, we know that many are going through some difficult times, time of sickness, times of difficult. Lord, but we know that you is the light of the world. And where that may seem to be dark, we know that you are our light. You are our guide, you are our protector. So Father God, we pray, Lord, that your Grace and your mercy will be upon our past and Nadine as they study to work and to labor to bring good news to your peoples. Then, Father God, we pray your blessing upon all our deacons and their family. Some of them have sickness in the family, Lord, but we know you. There's nothing too hard for you. So, Father God, we ask your healing upon them. Then, Father God, we ask you to look upon our mothers as they go through difficult times. 
some that they are uh, struggling with, and some may be a family issue. But whatever it might be, Lord, we pray, Lord, that you will relieve them of that problem, that your healing hand will be upon them. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you will continue to bless those that are sick. Pray, Lord, that you will unify those that um, it's difficult to get along with, uh, those that maybe don't know you as Lord of their life, but they're among your people. So, Father God, we pray, Lord, that everything we do and say will be to your glory and your honor. So, Father God, we pray, Lord, that you will open hearts and minds. Lord, we know that some is on Zoom watching and listen to your word. Father God, but they uh, is on the bed of affliction. So, Father God, we pray, Lord, that you will just renew their strength, encourage their heart, let them know, Lord, that there's nothing that you can't do. Father God, let us know, let them know that you, your love is stronger than anything else, stronger than any medicine, stronger than anything that would hinder them from doing what they uh, would like to do. Because, Lord, we realize that your word said that you would give us the uh, joy of our heart. So, Father God, we pray, Lord, that you will continue to help us to be the kind of people you would have us to be. We pray, Lord, that we will continue to grow in your spirit, Lord, because you are the one that are making us that heal in our body. You're the one that re front replies for all our needs. So, Father God, you're the one that give us light in time of darkness. You're the one, Lord, that bring us through the wilderness when we don't know the way. So, Father God, we pray, Lord, that you will strengthen, you will lead, you will guide us. And, Lord, we just take time to thank you for you just allowed us to see uh, anniversary for 106. And, Lord, we know we weren't there when it started. But, Lord, we thank you for the one that started out. And we thank you for the one that is carrying on now. So, Father God, we pray, Lord, that we will continue to acknowledge you. We'll continue to have faith in you. We'll continue to grow in wisdom and knowledge, Lord, that you have provided for us. And most of all, Lord, we pray that your healing hand be upon everyone that is sick among us. Restore their health. Remove, remove anything that will hinder them from praising and glorifying you. So, Father God, we thank you for what you've done. We thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for what you will be doing. Lord, we ask all these things, name of the Father, name of the Son, name of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you so much, Dick, for uh, leading us in our prayer. Uh, thank you so much for um, providing us with encouragement in the word, um, as well as providing us with um, a word to God on our behalf. Well, we know um, that God has assigned us this responsibility to pray ye one for another. So thank you so much for uh, standing in the gap for us. So again, welcome everyone to our Wednesday night a Bible study. God bless each of you. Um, we thank you so much for being with us. Those who may have joined a little later, we're so glad to have you on tonight. Pray that your spirit has been blessed already um, as we are preparing our hearts to jump back into the book of Habakkuk. We are going to start the final chapter of the book, which is chapter number three. Um, we completed the uh, first two chapters. We have been quizzed over the first two chapters and did a great job on the quiz so y'all understand the conversation between God and Habakkuk in chapter one and then you understand God's response to um, Habakkuk's concerns in chapter number two um, and then that moves us to where we come now 
um, to chapter number three, but just knowing that the end of chapter two is God is saying that he was going to deal with the Babylonians, um, that we must always remember that whatever is going to happen and whatever is going to be occurring, God is always in his holy temple. God is in his holy place, um, and he will always be in his holy place. And even um, Habakkuk's response in chapter three was almost an acknowledgement to the fact that in the midst of everything that's going on, God is always going to be in the place where he has always been. Nothing shakes him. Nothing moves him. Nothing causes him to get rattled. Uh, and, and it's good to know that whatever is happening in the world, um, as the songwriter said, God is still in charge. Um, so we just got to make sure that we keep that in mind as we are studying. Chapter number three, um, you should have received an outline, uh, church clerk, I'll send that out to you, um, along with a little short message from me, uh, welcoming each of you to um, to join us each Wednesday. So uh, chapter three was sent out, so we do have the outline for it. And um, if you don't have it, I know that Deacon Sutherland will have it on our church website. Um, either by tonight or tomorrow, I'm sure he'll have it available. Um, so the this is our outline here. Um, you can see it there on the screen for uh, chapter number three. Um, and I'm going to give a little bit of background of, of this thing when we get into it, um, because it is Habakkuk's response to God. And I said to you um, a couple of uh, days ago, uh, last meeting, that when God does something, there ought to be a response. Um, when God replies or God responds to your prayer or your request, there ought to be a uh, response from you. And that's what we see in chapter three. Um, it is no longer a conversation between um, God and Habakkuk. Chapter three is just Habakkuk's response to the initial conversation and what God said um, in regards to his concerns um, about what God was doing. Uh, so if we take a look at it, our outline, um, it's not very long, only 19 verses um, in chapter three, um, but you see it's the um, book of Habakkuk chapter number three. And I, I call this the song of Habakkuk. And you see there in parentheses, it's the prayer or a, song, because when we take a look at um, chapter number three, it is in the format um, of a psalm, just like we, we look at Psalms 23, uh, uh, Psalms 1. Um, uh, it, it's, it, it has a, a musical implication to it. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about that as we uh, jump into it, as we start studying it, chapter three. But just know that um, is Habakkuk's song. Um, you remember when the angel came to speak to Mary to tell her that she would give birth to a child. And we see the song uh, of Mary uh, as she rejoiced um, being highly favored. Um, and here after Habakkuk hears from God, um, he wrote a song or a psalm um, about how he felt um, about God's response. Um, in where it sent him. And you'll, we'll, we'll see this because sometimes when God answers us, it takes us places. Um, in our mind, it takes us places spiritually as well. So we look at the outline again, uh, Roman number one, it says Habakkuk's prayer in verses one and two. Um, we'll see this musical notation, um, Sijanoth. Uh, we'll see that in the text. I'll talk to you about what that is. It has to do with this being in the format of a song, um, and then we'll see, in the midst of this, we'll see Habakkuk's prayer for mercy, uh, based on what he heard God say, um, because you gotta remember, he was a little upset with God, and now he's, um, in a sense, asking God to have mercy on him. Um, so then we see in Roman numeral two, we'll see uh, God's appearance, which means that Habakkuk is going to reflect um, on God's appearance to his people. Um, and you can see there, and that's in verses 
uh, three through seven, this will be a reference in his mind and in his writing to Mount Sinai. When God came to visit his people, um, he began to reflect on that because after hearing God speak, he began to think about uh, the visitation of God to his people. Um, and we'll see um, this, what um, theologians call a, a theophany, um, a, a visual manifestation of God. Um, in his writings, you'll see him start reflecting on that, and he'll talk about um, reference to Mount Sinai. B, he talks about the beauty of God's appearance at Mount Sinai. Um, this is part of his reference as he begins to ponder on what God says, and then he talks about the uh, the cushions and the uh, the Midians witness God's appearing um, when he appeared at Mount Sinai. So uh, again, he he's reflecting on. Um, the power of God and the holiness of God, um, that God will show up. Uh, and when God shows up, he shows up with power. Keep in mind, um, he's reflecting on the fact that God answered him. Um, it ain't even about his concern no more. The fact that he prayed and he had concerns and God answered him, and then his mind began to reflect. In Roman numeral three, we see God's action. Of, he thinks about when God shows up at Mount Sinai, is how the rivers and the seas were used to display uh, God's power. Um, and we'll see that also that God confirms his prophecy um, in regards to um, what he said, the arrows will fly. Um, and we'll see that in the text uh, in verses eight through 15. It's talking about um, what's going to happen to the Babylonians when they are destroyed. Um, and then we'll see how the mountains, the springs, the moon, and the sun respond to God when he shows up. Um, and then we'll see this um, confirmation or the destruction of the Babylonians are confirmed uh, by God. And um, Abaca is basically um, saying that God confirmed it. And if God confirmed it, then you can rest assured that it's going to happen. Because remember back in chapter 2, one of the um, prolific lines in this um, whole book is the just shall live by faith. Um, and that is believing that what God says that he's going to do, he will cause it to come to pass. So Habakkuk here is going to be basically saying how God confirmed his destruction of the Babylonians. And then we'll see uh, where it shifts from verse 16 through 19. Um, we call it Habakkuk's assurance. Um, after hearing from God, he uh, began to feel assured about um, what God has said about the vision. Um, and it shows his reverence. So he began to just talk about God's reverence, uh, his reverence of God's power. We'll see, we'll see how he said he's patiently going to wait for the Babylonians to come on and invade. Uh, and he goes, Ain't nothing we can do about it. Uh, he, he's just assured that God is going to take care of him. And then he talks about a, having a level of peace um, in the worst possible situation. And we'll get to that um, where he starts talking about if things get so bad. Um, he talks about having trust and rejoicing in the Lord, regardless of how bad things are going to get. Um, he's still going to rejoice. And then eventually in the end, um, he promises that um, God had equip them to endure the invasion of the Babylonians. And this is where you see that God had given, he said God had given them hinds feet or deer feet, um, the ability to be able to stand in some difficult places. Um, so when the invasion comes, um, they are already equipped to be able to stand uh, the invasion when it comes, even though they are going to be taken into captivity for 70 years, Habakkuk says we're still going to be able to stand this invasion um, and eventually, as God said, return us back to Jerusalem to worship him um, in the holy city. So that is the outline for chapter number three. Um, that's what we'll follow. Those are the uh, highlights of the actual book. And uh, I'm sorry, of the chapter. Um, and there are some prominent statements that are made in this chapter as well. I hope that we um, remain mindful and vigilant to catch all of these things that scripture teaches us about God and what he says uh, to us and what he communicates to us through his words. So make sure uh, that we are mindful to, to stay close to seeing God 
in the text and not just Habakkuk and what he sees. So again, that's our outline for chapter number three. So if you will, bow with me very quickly. Heavenly Father, bless now our time in your word as we prepare to go into this final book, this final chapter of the book. Lord, I pray that you would help us, um, Lord, to have clarity and understanding. Lord, we know that sometimes there's portion of your word that may seem difficult, but thank you for your Holy Spirit who gives us insight. He guides us in the truth and righteousness. So even now, Lord, we pray that your spirit will open our hearts and minds. Lord, help us to see things that we can't see naturally. Allow us to see it spiritually, Lord. We pray that you would help us to draw closer to you so that uh, your spirit will draw closer to us, Lord, and reveal to us, illuminate your word to us, that we will have understanding in our personal lives. So thank you for those who are on, those who are under the sound of my voice, thank you, God, for allowing us to study together. Now have your way in our time tonight. In Jesus' name, amen, and thank God. Amen. amen. All right. All right. So let's um uh, get ready to, to go ahead on and jump into uh, chapter number three. Remember what I said to you about um, this chapter now. This is um, a, a prayer that's set to music. Um, if so, it's a psalm. It is um, a, a, a different type of response, and there's some different viewpoints about chapter three. Uh, there are some who say that chapter three may have been written later by Habakkuk and added on. Um, there are some who say that Habakkuk didn't write chapter number three, that there was somebody else who wrote it and attributed it to Habakkuk, but then again, there's others who say that it flows perfectly with uh, the flow of the book, and it was written by Habakkuk as a continuation. And there's one thing that if you ever go out there and search and you ever go out there and see when you look at the Dead Sea Scrolls, uh, that which was found, that last version, I think it was 1941 when they found the Dead Sea Scrolls, and there was the portion um, of Habakkuk in chapter three was not included. It was chapter one and chapter two, but just because it was not included in the Dead Sea Scrolls, which was something that someone had rewrote, does not mean that chapter three was not a part of the original uh, portion of text. So we can't just base it on that one viewpoint, or if you hear somebody say that, um, well, in the Dead Sea Scrolls, in the book of Habakkuk, chapter three wasn't there. Again, that does not mean that whoever um, um, transferred or wrote those um, particular ones that was found does not mean that chapter three didn't exist. So, um, so just know that there's some theological arguments um, about chapter three. And even the way that it starts, that is the reason um, that there is a, a question about chapter three. Um, and as we uh, jump into it, we'll, we'll see it starts off like a completely different book. Um, if you look at chapter one, verse one, it talks about the burden which Habakkuk the prophet did see. Chapter three starts off by saying a prayer of Habakkuk the prophet um, upon um, Shiganah. So th that way that it is worded, the way that it comes across seems like it's separate from the entire book. Like that is an introduction to a book itself, um, like a separate prayer that's apart from the vision uh, that was given. Uh, but here it's just saying that after Habakkuk had heard from God, as he, we saw in chapter two, verse one, how he said that I'm gonna sit myself on my post and I'm gonna wait to hear what God has to say. And then I think from verse two all the way down to uh, the verse 20 was God talking. And then the next thing we see is Habakkuk's prayer in regards to what he heard. So, so this is what he says, and that's the introductory verse. Um, it says that, that, that this is a prayer um, or a song or a PSALM psalm um, of Habakkuk, the prophet. And notice it said, upon Sijanah. Uh, that word sijanah um, is the actual Hebrew word. It, it's, it's not transcribed into English. That is the actual Hebrew word sijanah. 
Um, and there is not an equivalent English meaning to the word. Um, so it can't, couldn't be transcribed into English because there is no equivalent English word for it. So the word Sijanoth is actually um, a, a Hebrew word, but it is a, um, it's a musical term. It is a term that has to do with music. It has to do um, with the, the psalm writing. Um, it, it could be, uh, some say, an instrument. that uh, uh, A sijanoth could be an instrument. Um, some say that it could be a type of song, or it could be the speed of the psalm. Um, but one thing that they have come to a conclusion about, that it is an emotional song. It is to be sung or prayed with emotion, um, that there's an attachment of emotion to it. And the um, only other place we see in the Bible, a word that is close to uh, Sijanoth is in Psalm 7. Um, when you read Psalm 7, if you have like a study Bible, in the heading, it, it will say uh, the Sijion of David. Uh, that is the only other place you see a word that's even close to Sijanoth in scripture. Uh, so that term is a musical term, but when you look at uh, Psalm 7, and then you look at uh, this Habakkuk 3, where these two words are closely located, the terminology and the language is close. It's emotional terms about the uh, revelatory power of God whether it's dealing with nature or humanity, it's dealing with something emotional about the power of God. Uh, and, and it describes nature. We're going to see here, it talks about uh, uh, the seas and the mountains and, 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 and all of the different things that respond to God, the heavens and the moons and the sun. Uh, uh, and whereas in Psalm 7, same thing, it talks about how the earth and the sea and, the, and how, how nature itself responds to God. So this term, Sijanon, um, is just a musical term. So it's, it's not a place. So it wasn't like he was upon or standing upon a sigil. No, that's that's the musical term. So if it's, it's, it's almost like another word we'll see in here, uh, uh, um, a sila, which, which means to pause. We'll, we'll see that that's, that's what you see throughout the Psalms. It just means to pause and reflect on. Uh, so this word, a sigil, is similar type of musical notation. Uh, that we find in this introduction. Again, just verse one sounds like it's just the beginning of a completely different book, the prayer of Abaka, the prophet upon Sijana. Uh, uh, so it, it seems like it's a, a, a new book, but it's not. It is a continuation of this entire book. And he starts by, um, you, you heard me say uh, on an outline, he, he begins to pray and ask God for mercy. And look what um, he says in verse number two. He says, oh Lord, I have heard thy speech. Now remember, chapter two was God talking directly to Habakkuk. He wasn't talking to nobody else. He was talking directly to him. He told him, you write the vision. You make it plain. I'm telling you what is going to happen. So what Habakkuk had received from God, nobody else had heard it. He was the only one that had heard this from God. And he starts by saying, oh, Lord, oh, oh, oh Adonai, master. He, he, he says that I heard that speech. I heard your response. I heard what you said. And look what his response was. And I was afraid. <laughs> Sometimes. When God answers and you see his power in his answer, that word afraid there is not necessarily being scared of God. He says, I was in awe of you. I was just in reverence of you. I was just amazed by who you are. As scripture talks about the uh, fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Uh, and, and, and he says that, God, when you answered me. I heard what you said, because some, sometimes folks don't hear what you're saying when you're talking, when you answer them. He said, but I heard what you said, and instead of being mad, because you got to remember what was Habakkuk's first position. 
One, he was mad because God hadn't done anything about how wicked the people was. And then he got more angry with God when God says, I'm raising up the, the Chaldeans, the Babylonians. How, how can you use them wicked people? How can you? So he, he, his last conversation with God, his last part of the conversation was he was angry and frustrated and confused with God. And when God got finished talking, now he says, God, I heard what you said and I stand in awe of you. You are absolutely amazing. Now, I don't know how many of you have gotten so deep in the word of God that you have to pause and say, God, you are absolutely amazing. And I would challenge you, if you ain't never felt like that, go to Genesis chapter one, verse one, and start reading right there. And when you just, it'll make you pause and say, good Lord, you are amazing that out of absolutely nothing, you created this stuff. You just spoke it and it came to be. You are amazing. So now here, Habakkuk is saying, Lord, a few minutes ago, I was mad at you. A while ago, I was upset. Lord, I was confused. I was on this roller coaster of emotions. But now, Lord, your answer has brought me down to earth, has humbled me. And now I stand in awe after I heard your word. Now, I often say, when you come to church, look to hear a word from God. When you come, to hear a word from God, you will be in awe. Your spirit should be, Lord, you're amazing. Lord, you are absolutely amazing with, regardless of what the subject of the text is. But when the word of God is being expounded and you begin to see more clearly the nature of God, the power of God, the uh, the closeness of God, the uh, uh, the loving kindness of God, the patience of you see all of this stuff and you just have to stand in awe. Look, when you compare yourself to him, you say, Lord, I'm nothing. And even, even as the scripture said, Lord, what am I that you even concerned about me? What is man that you even think about us? You are such a holy amazing, wonderful God, and us being one out of so many, you know every number of hairs on our head. You know us. Habakkuk said, Lord, look, I heard you. And I think this is, a, again, a quick lesson for me and you. When we arguing and fussing with God and we try to figure out why God ain't moved the way we want him to move and, and God ain't done what we thought God ought to do, I keep telling you that God is uh, an omnipotent God. God knows everything. God is omnipresent. He is with you now and he's in the future already. So he already knows what's going to happen. God already sees what's happening with your situation. So instead of being mad with God, trust God. As he said back in chapter two, live by faith, live by your trust in God. Even if you can't see, trust him. Even if you can't understand, trust him. Even if you don't even know for sure, just trust him. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all the way, acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. If you don't know which way to go, trust in him. If you ain't got no words to say, it says the Holy Spirit speaks to us with groanings and intercedes for us. We know what you need to say when you don't know what to say. I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, God is with us and he has a complete plan for us. And Habakkuk said, Lord, I had my own thoughts and ways and feelings, but once you got finished talking to me, once I heard you speak, he says, once again, I was in awe and amazement of you. And I challenge every one of you on here, including myself, to search the scriptures, to see just how amazing he is. Psalms is a good place to be. Just read it. He who makes you lay down in green pastures, that's him. That, that he who has wonderful counseling, that's God. You'll stand in awe of his power and his authority. So he says, he says, Lord, I heard your speech. I heard what you said. I heard your response. And I stood in awe. I was afraid. And now look what he says to do next. He says, Lord, now that I heard you, now I'm standing in amazement. He says, oh, Lord, revive thy works. <laughs> what he's saying, 
That word revive in the Hebrew is the word shaya, which means to bring to life. He, he says, he says, Lord, I heard what you said. Now, bring to life, make to happen, cause all of this to come to pass, cause thy works to come to pass. Thy works is the vision. What is the vision? The judgment of Israel and the judgment against the Babylonians. Lord, all this that you got planned, bring it to life. I was mad at, in essence, he said, Lord, make it happen. He said, revive thy work. Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm around here mad at you about uh, why you ain't doing nothing, but you've been doing something the whole while. You already been raising up the Chaldeans. You've been already getting the Babylonians ready, and I thought you wasn't doing nothing. And I'm trying to cause your plan to stop. I'm saying, how can you use them people, and how can you choose them over folks who's supposed to be holy? And now he's saying, Lord, look here, cause your plan to come alive. Because I thought I knew what I was talking about, but when I saw how awesome you were, when you told me your plan, that you said if you told it to me, I would not even understand it. But when you told me, Lord, my only response is, Lord, make it happen. Bring it to life. Do I like it? Not necessarily. I don't like the idea of going into captivity. You say I'm a, we going into captivity, but what I do like is that your judgment is righteous. Your judgment upon us is righteous. Your judgment upon the Babylonians are righteous because based on what you said to me in chapter two, you are amazing. You already got a plan. I thought you wasn't doing nothing, but you were already working your plan. Now that you were working your plan, I was trying to bring it to an end. Lord, cause that thing to come alive. And he says, look, look what he says, do it. He said, he said, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In essence, do it in my time. He says, do it in our time. Do it. And he, you see that same verse repeated. He says, in the midst of the years, in the midst of the years, make known. In essence, he says, in our time, make it known. In our day, Lord, go ahead on and do it. Remember, again, back in chapter two. Abaka was saying, how in the world can you do that? And now he's saying, answer too big for me to understand. <laughs> Lord, I just know you're amazing. Just make it happen. And make it happen in the time frame that you have already spoken that it was going to happen. Now, here is, is my word for us tonight. Whatever you've been asking God for, just pray and ask the Lord, Lord, make it happen. When, how, even if I can't see it, even if I can't put my finger on it, even if I can't follow you why you're doing it, make it happen. Cause it to come to pass. I know, Lord, I'm in the hospital. Lord, I know I'm down. I'm sick. Lord, I'm broken. I ain't got no money. Lord, I, my body is aching. I don't understand. But whatever it is you're doing, Lord, make it happen because I stand in all you. And whatever, thank you, Lord, whatever route you need to take me to get me to where you need to be, go ahead on and do it because you're amazing. I might not understand it, but it's working for my good. Hello, Paul said that in Romans 8 and 28. For we know what? That all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. When God got a purpose for your life, everything you're going through serves a meaning. Because that 29th verse of Romans chapter 8 says that, that the purpose of it is to conform us into the image of his son, Jesus. So, Lord, if I got to go through sickness to look more like Jesus, God, I, I don't like it, but take me through it. If I got to go down being talked about, Lord, let him talk about me if that's going to make me be more like Christ. Whatever you need to chip off of me, whatever I need to go through to be conformed, Lord, you do it. And now... Habakkuk here, after feeling how he felt, he said, Lord, you know more than I do. So do whatever you need to do and do it in my time, the time frame that you said it was going to happen. Lord, make it known. Because I'm going to write the vision. I'm going to make it known and they're going to run with it and other people are going to hear about what you're going to do. So when you do it in our time, the only thing that's happening, I'm not going to be the only one that's in awe of you, but all who have heard what you're going to do and see it come to pass, now they will be in awe of you. Why? Because this is what the God of Habakkuk has said. The God of Habakkuk said this was going to happen. And it came to pass. And it's the, it's the way that God works sometimes. Um, when he does what, we, what he says he's going to do, um, we stand in awe of him. So Habakkuk said, Lord, make it happen. In your time, 
in our time, in the time frame that you have allotted, make it happen. But look at the last clause in verse two. He said, but in your wrath, in your judgment, in your anger, why are you dealing with Israel and sending us into captivity? Why are you carrying out your plan to destroy the Babylonians for them being such an evil people? He says, remember mercy. Because, <laughs> Lord, I know what I said. <laughs> I know how I felt. I know I was mad at you earlier. I know I was saying, I don't know how you can use these folk. I don't know. How, Lord, where you at? You quiet. You, you got to remember what his conversation was in chapter one. He was telling God, you quiet, you ain't doing nothing. Where you at? Your oracles and your, your, your commands aren't being followed. Lord, where are you in letting this happen to your people? But now he's saying, pretty much, God have mercy on me. Forgive me for thinking the way that I was thinking. Even forgive me for saying what I was saying. So some of us may need to go back and tell God, Lord, forgive me. Because I just didn't understand what you were doing at the time. When I was upset and mad at you, that I got fired. Not realizing that was the only way I was going to get the new job you had in store for me. That I had to get fired first. Then you opened the door for me to step into something good. Lord, I didn't realize that me going through sickness was a way for you to be glorified. Thank you, Lord. Because you received glory in my weakness. And that's what Paul says. And if I got to go through infirmity so that you can be glorified, then Lord, give me the strength. And that's what he told Paul. My grace is sufficient. And his grace is still sufficient. If you're going through, his grace is sufficient. If you're having trouble, his grace is sufficient. You just got to tell God, God, forgive me for how I was thinking. You're, 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 you're so far ahead of me. Your, your plan is so far ahead of me. And I can only see so far. I can only comprehend so much. But God, you see it all. But in, in my, my finite uh, mindset, I process what I can think. I process what I see. And sometimes, I know somebody, I say stuff that I shouldn't say. I express stuff that I shouldn't. Can I be honest tonight? That, that, that I, I, I say stuff to you, God, that I shouldn't really say. Because in the end, when I make my way, you, you, you help me to, to push through and make my way through it. And I get on the other side of what I'm going through. And I look back and I say, Lord, thank you. That helped me to be the person that I am today. So don't always curse God for your challenges. Don't always curse God for your hard times. Sometimes uh, I always say, oh, sickness is not unto death. Sometimes God need a, a vessel of honor to prove that he's a healer. And we just need to say, Lord, thank you for using me. You could have used anybody you want to. But you used me, you chose me, and you blessed me. So Habakkuk here is saying, have mercy on me in the midst of your wrath. Why are you dealing with us? Why are you dealing with the Babylonians? God have mercy on us. And I love the implication of the text because it's dual in nature. Um, the first part is he's saying, God have mercy on me because I know what I said. I know what I said to you about these people you use it. The, what you said, what I said about how can you use them evil. Lord, forgive me because I didn't see your big plan. But here's the other piece of the mercy. Have mercy on Israel. We as a people, we are chosen folk. Yeah, we, we have rebelled. I know I told you in chapter one about how evil they were and how they were going after and doing their own stuff. But now I see your plan. Now I see your judgment. Now I see that you got a plan to correct everything. He says at the end of verse two, Lord, in the midst of your anger, in the midst of your judgment, have mercy. That's why you will always hear me in my prayers, praying, asking God to have mercy. Mercy is um, not receiving what you do deserve. Amen. Wages of sin is what? Death. Every time we sin should be death. But thank God we're not receiving what we deserve. It's mercy. God, God, thank you for being merciful toward us. That instead of giving us death, 
you give us forgiveness and extend to us eternal life and even life more abundantly. Come on, somebody. If that itself doesn't make you stand in awe of God, that you know according to his holiness, according to who he is, the nature of God who cannot look upon sin, a perfect God who has all power, has made a way for you to be forgiven and still be brought before his presence. I stand in awe of God. Not that I am deserving, but thank God for my sacrifice, that I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and that because of him, my mercies are new every day. Because of Jesus, I'm forgiven of my sins. Because of Jesus, instead of receiving punishment, I receive forgiveness. I receive grace. I receive love. I receive kindness. I receive a sense of long suffering and patience and peace with me. This is what Habakkuk is saying. And if we put ourselves in Habakkuk's place, there are some things we said to God that we need to go back to him. Say, God, forgive me because I didn't see the whole plan. Forgive me. I spoke out of turn. I, I was speaking about stuff that was too wise for me to even speak about. You, you knew so much more than I did. So God, as we, as we close out with this verse, have mercy on me. So if you get anything from tonight, um, just know that your prayer should be to God. Keep working your plan in my life. And I'm, if, I, if I don't understand it, Give me grace because you say it's sufficient. You're, 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 you being with me is enough to make it through. However long it's going to last, however long I got to stay down, however long I got to stay in the hospital, however long I got to go through what I'm going through, Lord, your grace is sufficient because I will continue to look to the hills from which cometh my help. All of my help comes from you. So, Lord, in the midst of it all, have mercy on us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, I'm going to close there, um, and we'll uh, take back up at uh, verse number three um, as we'll continue on, as Habakkuk then will begin to reflect even more uh, from his um, biblical connect. you got to remember he's a prophet, uh, so he knew the history of Israel, and he will begin to think back. Um, we say sometimes when I look back over my life and see all that God has done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Well, Habakkuk is going to be looking back um, at what God has already done for Israel. Um, and I, I would challenge us even for next week to think back to times where God has already shown up for you um, in the past. Uh, don't forget about it. He's shown up before, and he can show up again. Amen. Let us look to the Lord. Heavenly Father, God, thank you for our time in your word. Thank you for the study tonight. Father, thank you for the principles that we're learning in your word. Thank you, Lord, for shining light um, on the things that we need to see. Thank you for showing us more about you um, and that, Lord, you are with us. And we pray, Lord, that you would forgive us of even some of the words that we may have spoken um, out of turn when we were feeling whatever way we were feeling. Lord, I pray that you will have mercy on us, Lord, and forgive us of those things that we have done wrong. So even in your anger, for we know that we are not the targets of your anger, Lord, for you said that there is now therefore no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. So we know we're not the target um, of your anger, but we know that there are times we come short of your glory. So, Father, we pray that you would be merciful upon us, um, even as you did for Israel. Um, have mercy on us and help us, Lord, to know that uh, it's all working together for our good. Strengthen those, Lord, that are weak spiritually. Strengthen those that are weak physically. Lord, help those who may have been wronged by others. 
um, give them a sense of forgiveness in their hearts. That, Lord, they're not walking around with anger and wrath uh, in their own hearts. Lord, I pray that you will continue to bring unity um, among the body of Christ, more specifically bringing unity among our church. That, God, you will hold us in the hollow of your hand. Thank you for, again, for those 106 years that you've already done it. You have a track record, God, of holding us together. So we believe you. God, we trust you. We thank you and pray that you would, Lord, keep us and bless us under the next appointed time that we can come together again and worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, we pray that you would hold us together, um, praying one for another. Um, Lord, looking for that great day when you shall return to take us home. So we thank you tonight. We love you, God. Thank you for this time in your word. Thank you, Lord, for the presence of your Holy Spirit among us. And Lord, we glorify you even for it all. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and thank God. Amen. God bless you all. And thank you all for studying with us on tonight. God bless you. Uh, good to see you all. Uh, hey, Mommy, God bless you. Good to see you. Mother Arcola, thank you very much, Pastor. Amen. Thank you, Rev. Good to see you, brother. Uh, brother Moses, God bless. Good to see you, man. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Praying, Doc. Be encouraged. Thank you. Thank you. And love you. Love you. Love you too, Sister Harvin. God bless. All right. Y'all well, have a good night and look forward to seeing y'all next time. God bless y'all.